introduced the H2GO, a bicycle, bicycle powered water filtration system. My teammates from left to right are Kenneth Hernandez, Betsy Gonzalez, Sandra Alzate, I'm Justin Cromarty, and our advisor, Dr. Andres Tremonte. Water is an essential component to human life, yet 768 million people don't have access to this precious source. That equates to roughly one in every eight people. An even more devastating <coughs> statistic uh, referenced from UNICEF is that every 21 seconds a child dies from a water-related illness. And even in those countries where they have some form of water containment, the jerry can weigh up to 40 pounds when full. On top of that, most of these people have to travel an average of up to four miles just to reach sources that often contain polluted and contaminated water. What we're proposing is a tool that allows for purification of this water and decreasing travel time to and from. We believe that it will provide an immediate improvement in quality of life for a lengthy duration of time until a more permanent solution can be established. Okay. Our areas of focus will be uh, Sub-Saharan sub Africa, focusing on parts of Kenya and South Sudan, as well as uh, South America and the Caribbean and Southern Asia. All right, so we have been looking at two current examples. These are the CycleClean and the Acrod. The CycleClean is manufactured by the Japanese company Nefumese, and the Acrod is um, a product that I made for the Innovator Dive competition. Now, both of these devices are capable of filtering water as we pedal, but only the Acrod can do it as on the go and has storage capabilities. Now, the CycleClean has a um, market price of $6,600, and because of the design and the materials used, the Acrod is much too expensive to be mass produced. For these reasons, we are not going to be using them, and, or working with them, but only using them as references. Now, the main, um, the main distinction between our project and these models is that ours would consist of a sidecar that would contain a water filtration system, and uh, be retrofitable to any pre-existing pipe. Now, the design considerations for our project is that the pump must be, um, must be adequate for all the fish needs, and the materials that we use must be durable, and also the, main, the maintenance very limited. Um, the total goal, the goals of the total cost must be, we wanted it to be under $500, and it must, the design would be lightweight to, con to counteract any momentum problems that we might, uh, we might get, and we might also implement baffles within the tank. It must also be uh, applicable to different terrains and have a water capacity of ideally 20 liters. But it must, most importantly, it must be very easy to use to avoid any user errors. We will be using two separate pumps, a sediment, uh, two separate filters, a sediment filter and a three-way inline filter. The Sawyer three-way inline filter um, improves the microbiological quality of water. It removes 99.9% .9 of bacteria and protozoa, which are <coughs> major culprits in uh, contaminated waters in the areas that we mentioned before. Um, it, will all, uh, it has a million gallon ga uh, lifetime guarantee by the manufacturer, and it will be preceded by a sediment filter to ensure its longevity. Uh, we'll be also using a peristaltic pump. We're choosing to build our own peristaltic pump because uh, the peristaltic pumps that are now out in the market are either too expensive or don't meet our design criteria. We will be using a three roller design as opposed to a two roller design to steady the output flow. Um, the three rollers will be attached in the center to a shaft surrounded by um, elastomeric tubing and encased in a metallic housing. Uh, the advantages to a peristaltic pump is that they're easy to clean. Um, easy to maintain and very durable. Uh, one of the main de design points in our project is to facilitate the transfer of water from the source to the people. So we chose a side card as opposed to another attachment because we can we believe that we can maximize the load that it can carry. Um, we were inspired by the extra cycle freight cart as, um, as our design will fold over the rear wheel when not in use and our side card will be durable. Um, and easily retrofitable to most standard bikes. So here we have our proposed sidecar design that we wish to achieve in the near future. We're under still further development, but we have a core idea of how we want this bike attachment to be set up as. As you can see, the <coughs> sidecar consists of a peristaltic pump where the, where the water will be activated through the pedaling motion, going through the set of hoses, entering the water filtration system, and thus producing fresh, drinkable water. So in order to fulfill these requirements, a series of tests will be uh, needed to be performed. For instance, the pump will undergo different water conditions, where there will be uh, sludge and no sludge and other sediment filters until there is a point of failure. As for the filtration system, a water purity test will be performed before and after running the water through the system and a red dye test to ensure the effectiveness of the filter. 
Now for the side card, a solid simulation and an outdoor test will be performed to ensure the maneuverability and the balance of the side card. Here we have our timeline and responsibilities for our project. And so once we have our project um, in motion, we hope to achieve the overall goal to facilitate access and transport of clean water by using this pipe attachment. So we hope by collaborating with these companies um, to specifically um, make the most potential impact to the, mark, uh, to the market specifically targeted to and produce immediate uh, improvement in the quality of life. Any questions? First question I'd like to ask is about the peristaltic pump. Why did you make a decision to go with the peristaltic pump versus another? Um, we felt it was the easiest pump to, let's say, maintain out in the field where our, our main goal is to send this out to very rural areas. And peristaltic pumps are easy to use, easy to clean, maintain, and in case of failure, very easy to repair. Uh, what about the tubing? <coughs> The tubing, we're, we haven't quite decided on it, but it has to be elastomeric, so either PVC, silicone, or rubber. So, so the weakest link, I think, the from the robustness is the tubing. Yes. And uh, if, if I'm sitting in Africa, what, is, what are the opportunities to provide myself with additional tubing if tubing goes bad? Well, when we're going to test the uh, pump, we're going to test it to failure. So that's going to be one of our main sticking points, the tubing and how long it lasts. Okay. And um, the filtration system, where is the filtration relative to the pump? It's going to be attached to the side card. Um, there's a picture on it, actually, if you can see. It will be, the pump is going to be obviously attached to the bicycle, and it will be relatively. So close filtration to is before the pump? Um, no, after. So Which is another reason why we chose a peristaltic. So, pump how do you manage EPA. large particles and silt and all kinds of things that could potentially clog up that system. That would actually be the sediment filter that we'll have there initially. So we have two. So that's filters. before the pump. Right. Oh, well, we, we're still in the same. Do you have a slide that details <coughs> that? Yes. So, so we have different options to either to have before or after the pump. But the sediment filter that we have here, that is what's going to be able to catch at least large particles that you're, that you're specifically, um, you know, maybe damage the pump or not let the water flow through the pump. So once we have that going, then we'll actually go to the three-way uh, soya filter. That will be the one to actually take out all the bacteria um, from the water, the contaminated water. It's also another reason why we chose a peristaltic pump, because it can deal with about 60% of solid material within the water. Okay, thank you. Are you going to build one of these bicycles? Is that part of the project? No, the bicycle is going to be donated, which is going to build a good part of the uh, attachment to it. And the goal is to make our attachment retrofittable to most bicycles, so the bicycle doesn't have to be shipped, just the attachment. So in a few months, we'll be able to see a bicycle wheel in here? Yes. yes. So we'll have the bicycle with the attachment here, yes. Okay. Have you guys done any uh, initial analysis on the flow rates or anything like that? We have not. What other pumps did you guys investigate besides the pumps? Um, centrifugal. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the main sticking point was we wanted something that allowed the kinetic energy, obviously, to pump it because we knew they wouldn't have any type of electronic to pump it. So, um, <coughs> uh, so <coughs> that, I, I'll just follow up on that. How does the peristaltic pump interface with the bicycle itself? Okay, the shaft that will be attached to the center, it will have a wheel at the end of it, and that wheel will make contact with the back wheel. So your the wheel itself will ride on top of the wheel of the bike. Right? Yes. Okay. yes. Sometimes that can be very tricky. Yes. So yeah. Mission design, but find a way to make it. We'll find a way to yeah. yeah, I mean the bracket will be right. able to be. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, I don't know, as a kid, you know, you have those little uh, attachments to the side of the bike. Never worked right. The light. <laughs> the light. <laughs> right. So I mean, there are other options for that too. You can attach it straight to the axle itself. You know. Right. Yeah. So if you guys. Do Any further questions? Do you have other questions? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you.